Hey humans, Lyric here, and this week I'm going to be talking about why autism numbers have been going up over the past several years and why this actually is a good thing. If you're wondering and would like to know more, please do stay tuned. We didn't have all this autism stuff when I was growing up. Oh my gosh, there are so many autistic people now. This is an epidemic. Autistic people are everywhere. All of a sudden, where did they come from? Have you heard this nonsense? Have you heard this nonsense? Let's talk about why this is nonsense and there is no autism epidemic. First, let's tackle the first claim that we didn't have all this autism stuff when you were growing up because that one's easy. We didn't have autism in our diagnostic manual until 1980. So there wasn't the word and the language for autism. It wasn't something that was diagnosed before 1980. But just because we didn't have a word for autism and for autistic people doesn't mean we weren't here and we didn't exist. That doesn't make sense. There are a lot of stars and planets in space that we haven't named yet, but they are still out there because autism was not a diagnosis before 1980 in America. A lot of autistic people would have been put away and hidden and institutionalized and therefore made invisible and given other labels up until 1980. In the year 2000, the rates of diagnosis for autistic children was 1 in 150. But then, six years later, in 2006, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommended screenings for autism during regular routine pediatric visits between the ages of 18 and then at 24 months. So here's the thing about that. In 2006, when all of this started, I had already graduated high school with all of this focus on autistic children specifically, hardly anyone has been focused on autistic adults. I'm 34, and though I struggled a lot in school, and I even spent time in special education and gifted and talented, though that didn't go so well, my autism was missed. We have this entire generation of autistic adults that are my age, maybe a little younger, and especially older than me, who are likely missed by this system because when we were growing up, people around us had little to no experience with autistic people. We didn't really understand or know what autism was. Two years later, in 2008, the autism prevalence rates were 1 in 88. And then, in 2013, something very important happened. In the summer of 2013, the Diagnostic Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM-5, was released. And in 2013, with this version of the DSM, they removed Asperger's as a diagnosis from the Diagnostic Manual. And moving forward, people who would have previously been diagnosed as having Asperger's would now be diagnosed as autistic, which meant that a lot more people 
we're now going to suddenly be qualifying for this autism label. In 2014, the numbers released by the CDC on autism prevalence were 1 in 68. That is up from 1 in 88 in 2008. In 2020, most recently, the CDC has reported that approximately 1 in 54 children are estimated to be autistic. This is only talking about children in their estimate, I want you to notice as well. They're not talking about adults or people who may not have the diagnosis or those missing generation of autistic people who were missed or those who were self-diagnosed or those who don't even know they're autistic. It is likely we are going to continue to see the number of autistic people being diagnosed increasing. And that is not because there are suddenly more autistic people. The fact is, autism isn't nearly as rare as we once thought it was. That's why the diagnostic criteria has increasingly been widened over the years to include more people who would have been left out previously so that more of us can get the help and the answers that we need. There's also been a lot more awareness of autism, and though there's not really an epidemic, as some organizations have led us to believe in the past, more autistic people speaking up and sharing their experiences of what it's like to be an autistic human living in the modern world also leads to more and more people uncovering hidden truths about themselves. Yay, internet. For a long time, autism has been underdiagnosed, and we're only just now getting on the way to correcting that wrong and the harm that has been done by this. Even today, autism is underdiagnosed. It's not overdiagnosed. I know there's going to be some people mad at me for saying that, but it's true. And gatekeeping access to this diagnosis only hurts autistic people. Unfortunately, we still have a huge diagnostic disparity. Poor autistic people, underprivileged autistic people, autistics of other minority groups, autistics who are multiply marginalized are less likely to be diagnosed or have less access to diagnosis. Some autistic people are going to be labeled as having behavioral problems in school instead of having our struggles recognized. I'm speaking from experience here as someone growing up in the education system that was needing a lot of help but was dismissed as being lazy and defiant and rebellious and all of these things when I was just an anxious kid that really needed some help with school. This happens regularly. And then adult diagnosis. Depending on where you live, there may or may not be doctors in your area willing to diagnose adults, and they often will only work with children. Or if you are in another country, the wait list can be years and years long. That is years and years of not being able to get answers to help yourself when you are struggling in life. I am incredibly grateful to have been diagnosed late in life at the age of 29, but I am also very aware of how lucky I am to have been caught after becoming an adult and leaving the education system because our system doesn't think much for or take autistic adults into consideration. In addition, so many other autistic people may not have the means to access the diagnosis for so many reasons. So I feel very privileged to have this information about myself. It has allowed me to move forward in my life and start to heal myself from a lifetime of trauma, 
knowing I was different, feeling myself struggle, but not having the language to describe and explain these differences. All right, humans. Thanks for hanging out with me. With the, hanging out me. Thanks for hanging out with me this week as I talk about the autism epidemic, the raise in autism numbers and diagnosis and self-diagnosis and autism prevalence and all of these numerical issues around autistic people. A little bit, a little bit of a different beat going through that timeline. I hope this was educational to you. Drop a comment below if you found this helpful. If you're self-diagnosed, I send my love. You are welcome, supported, and I hope you feel safe here. Drop a comment and say hi if you're self-diagnosed or diagnosed and you support self-diagnosed autistic people. Give them some love. People need to be nice. It's a complicated issue and some people don't have the privilege of accessing a diagnosis. All right. Huge thank you to the Patreon supporters and Facebook subscribers and the YouTube channel members who do that little monetary subscription that helped me with the transcriptioning software and the web hosting. I'm going to go transcribe this video now and that takes me a while, but it would take me so much longer without that software. I could not do this blog without the help of the viewers. The viewers like you make this possible. I'm not joking though. I, I need your help. I'm grateful for your help. I couldn't be doing this without you. So thanks for making this blog everything it is. Whether you're a monetary subscriber or you are here commenting, giving your video ideas, leaving your personal experiences and suggestions and feedback, each and every single one of you makes this possible. I am so grateful. Um, until next week, humans, I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.